is Manny Loves Manuals, which is funny because I don't have one. I will have one on Friday. But uh, I have a 2011 F10. And 55 8 speed um, coming I started this channel originally with an F10 N63 that was actually manual very rare and it blew <laughs> just like every other N63 so um, but, but I left the name because I plan to get another one so I got the F10 8 speed uh, 535i 2011 and I enjoy very much and it was fun having it is fun having the 8 speed but I want to go back to manual but that's irrelevant to this video so this video is intended to do a tune comparison where a lot of people don't do it because it's expensive to tune cars with multiple people, especially when most tuners are very experienced so the gains differences are negligible or immeasurable, whether it be a dyno or a track, you know, so many factors affect. If a tune was 2% better, you could have gone to the track at a 90 degree day and offset any gains that you may have been able to see. So. <laughs> You, know, you would need your your uh, launch and everything to be identical. You know, there's just so many factors that make comparing tunes impossible with uh, experienced tuners because the differences are going to be negligible or not even noticeable. But I think I have an opportunity to show a significant difference between two tuners. Um, one being Doc Fu, which uh, he can be pretty controversial. Uh, I'm learning more recently why, but otherwise he's, you know, he's very friendly and um, responsive as far as tunes go, uh, revisions. Um, I've been having some issues with him recently with uh, addressing very some issues that I have, and I'm trying to get them rectified. And I get a revision with no response, another revision with no response to my questions, and that's <clears throat> happened here and there throughout the year, but it's happening pretty much constantly now. Um, I, I, the issues that I've been experiencing in my car have make me feel like that's a, that's because he simply doesn't know the answer and is trying to figure it out live, which I'd be okay with because everyone says he's an experience, which is fine. Everyone who has twenty years experience had to start on day one, right? I have no problem uh, us loading together. I just wish he'd be more communicative because it makes me uneasy. I tell him I have such and such issue. He replies with revision. I ask him what do you think what the issue was. Doesn't reply with anything. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I have to ask him saying three or four times to get a reply. It's always very vague. Something, for example, he suggested to me a year ago the Helix overdrive pump, and I bought it. And then now that we're having feeling issues, he says he doesn't recommend it. But I showed him a screenshot of when he told me to buy it. So um, now I have a 2011. N55, which carries over the N54 style fuel pump, so it doesn't have many aftermarket options. So it's not like I could I had to buy that pump anyways. But just the the flip flop on it is a little disconcerting, you know. Another issue is um, he's hitting max fuel in my car when the pump has hit six or seven hundred more psi in other cars. So, but I want to trust him. He's tuned my car. Uh, for a year and it's all been fantastic. The cars run great and I'm happy with the quarter mile times and hot weather performance, cold weather performance, everything. Um, <clears throat> especially for being a heavy car because obviously the, the F10 weighs 4,300 pounds roughly um, regardless of the engine, you know, it'll vary a little bit. But So I just recently went pure stage one and even though it's the simple turbo, it seems to be exceeding his knowledge base. Now, I have concluded that he hasn't said that. Actually, the issue is he doesn't say anything. We're having issues where upon shifts, the car will drop to 10 pounds and refuses to, to boost again. Um, he told me it was exceeding torque limiters, which actually wasn't because I, I um, shared the log on Facebook groups and forums and uh, data zap and all that. And the what he's considering fuel cut actually isn't happening at all. There's Turns out there's all kinds of things and parameters that are being unused or unmonitored that might be triggering a plethora of things that the car is correcting and he's not aware of or, nor, or doesn't understand. Um, so after a little, so when I went pure stage one, um, the car started getting faster and faster and it was a lot of fun. I was so happy with his tuning, except that when I was having lean codes everywhere and I started throwing money at the car based on recommendations that we've 
uh, came together, uh, only to find out that they were tune related and he tuned them all out in the end. So I spent $2,400 on parts that I didn't necessarily need. For example, he thought my fuel, my fuel pump was crashing, so I replaced the stock fuel pump with another stock fuel pump, which is $1,000. And the, the stock one and the aftermarket, well, the replace, stock replacement one, both of them worked flawlessly. The issues persisted with a new pump and an old pump. And I bought the OEM genuine BMW pump, not those $100 o, Osiris or whatever, uh, FT something, Amazon pumps, you know, which I actually bought those just for the sake of comparison. And each pump that I bought for 120 bucks lasted me, one lasted me two miles, one lasted me 11 miles. So I got, I became an expert at pulling the pump out over and over and over over four days so I lost a lot of fuel on the floor <laughs> right now that's kind of expensive um, <clears throat> so um, so to reiterate when I was bolt on just intercooler charge pipe boost pipe and intake he tuned the car E50 and 93 and it was fantastic um, he tuned my pure stage one on 93 which ran great now obviously ran great feel wise like seat of the pants wise right I, so without we'll, we'll see soon if a new tuner can make the car run better faster more powerful whatever you know so but we went but when we, when we went to e50 on the pure stage one that's when we started having issues and he started struggling with errors and fuel cut well what he was calling fuel cut which was throttle closures on my end and um just things and and we at one point seven days went by without a reply and i replied to him I was like, hey are we, are we done tuning or and he was like he asked me which tune felt great to me i'm like which, which revision felt great to me in the last 20 revisions i don't know you know uh, uh at the, the memory is fresh like 10 minutes ago but not a week ago so then he asked me to pick an old revision um and i picked it and then he revised it one more time and then he just said, it's fine there. You don't have enough fuel. My car started cutting out. He's like, you don't have enough fuel. So I was not satisfied with that answer, but I had spent weeks and weeks of revisions, almost 60 revisions between um, multiple sessions and only to conclude that he just, just couldn't figure it out. So the car was dialed back by him and the E50 tune felt slower or equal to the 93 tune and that was odd because that, at every stage, the ethanol mixes provided a very, very noticeable seat of the pants and actual draggy change in power, you know, in a measured time. So <clears throat> I contacted David Shoup, which is, seems to be the, uh, the man for the N55 and N54 world. Now, I wanted him prior, but um, like a year and change ago, but Doc Boo, uh, was reasonably priced in comparison. He is cheaper. And I didn't know at the time that he was relatively new, but I just saw how people were raving about him. So I saw some negative comments, but you know, people trash each other all the time or they have their favorite tuner. So they, you know, talk a little crap or whatever. So I didn't uh, take that too seriously. And like I said, experience has been 95% good, except the class tune with the pure stage one and helix overdrive pump. Uh, and E50 mix that I think he might I might be exceeding his knowledge base. So uh, David Shoup was difficult to get a hold of. Um, it sucks. He's a one man band, so it's it's not necessarily a knock. It's just a disadvantage when you want to hurry up and get the car tuned. He is highly sought after, so I imagine like me and everybody else asking him the same fucking questions every day. When can you tune me? What can you do? Answering the same questions every day. Uh, he has been more in focus now that I, I I paid him and where he's actually tuning my car, but leading up to it, uh, I was thinking about just I was gonna go with Wedge because um, that's the other person that Mission and Wedge and and David Shoup, uh, the three people that three groups of tuners that seem to be highly 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 revered. Um, I have no problem uh, being somewhat of a guinea pig where someone like Doc Vu. In hindsight, it was a guinea pig, but I need to know that I have the support. If I'm willing to give you my car, which is incredibly expensive to me, you know, like to the average person, you know, any car, then I expect um, detailed and knowledgeable tuning. If you don't know, you don't know, that's fine. Tell me, hey, I got to research this. I'll get back to you. That's, that's all fine. But just the blank replies with revisions with no information 
and the fact that the car doesn't run well. It runs good if the weather's cold, it runs like shit, the weather's hot. But then a couple of days later, it ran shit like shit when it was cold, it ran good when it was hot, so I had no clue what the issues were. So I bowed down, I mean, I bowed out, and I just told him, thanks, car runs perfect, thank you. Um, he was just telling me I need more fuel. So David Shoup finally got back to me, and I apologize if his name is not Shoup, <laughs> it's Schauper, I don't know. Um, he finally got back to me, it was pricier, but you know, you get what you pay for, I suppose. And I mentioned in the forum that I was switching to him and tons of people uh, were like, that's what, you know, best decision ever, so on and so forth. So I can say that I'm still logging with him. I haven't even ran one WOT run yet. I'm still logging with him, so, and tuning. Um, so I don't have my final tune yet, but I can tell you that one revision in, I'm making 2.5 pounds more than the max boost that I was ever doing on the dock boot. And this is a revision too of potentially 20 or 30 revisions. Uh, his method is methodical. And I'm sure any of you guys have used him. He goes in 500 RPM increments. It requires a lot of patience of the user. I still haven't had the green light to beat on the car yet. It's, it's hard because the car feels good, but um, you know, uh, he, he explains things so technically in a way that's a lot, I, mechanically, excuse me, mechanically I am completely comfortable. I'll tackle any car, any part, any modification, any repair on any car, hands down. Tuning and, and, and ECM and uh, uh, things like that is something I've never got into. And coming from American muscle cars, tuning is a lot simpler on those cars. So um, having him explain to me things that uh, are very, are just so overwhelming show me how much he actually knows. You know, the, the, his, his detailed reply, I asked him, he was telling me about having throttle closures. So I asked him, why is that? And he gave me a long reply detailing as much technical information that um, that's almost like a flex, right? It's like, he knows the question probably could have been answered much simpler, but he is just the man. He just knows, it's almost as if he wrote the DME coding for the BMW, you know, himself. So that is a reassuring thing. Um, and, so the, the summary would be Dafu is a fast reply as far as revisions. So doesn't really attend to your questions. David Shoup takes care of everything, but uh, I, I'm getting like a revision a day, sometimes two. And um, he replies to everything I ask him, but he can, I mean, he's incredibly busy compared to other tuners. So I get this thing is going to take a lot longer than Dafu. For example, my 93 tune with Dafu, I tuned it all in one day. Um, I got I got a road by my house that's really good for testing, and um, I had I had twenty four revisions in one day, uh, which I don't expect in any capacity to have that from David Shoup. But I also know that he's got a laundry list of people uh, chomping at the bit to, to get tuned by him. So the purpose of this tune, of this video, excuse me, uh, is just to set up the you know the looming future where I'm gonna go to Bradenton or Orlando Speedwell, wherever is more convenient at the time. And after I have a final E50 and a final 93 tune from David Shoup, I'm going to load them. And I mean, I'm going to load a Doc Vu tune, run the quarter, load the David Shoup, run the quarter same day. That way it's as fair as possible. Then I uh, probably have to do it over two trips. So then when I have an empty tank, I can go fill up E50 and then do an E50 versus E50 run. Um, and do 60 to 130s and all those other parameters that people seem to like on Draggy and all that. Um, <clears throat> it will be unbiased. I have, uh, I want to feel like my time dedicated to the Doc Boo wasn't in vain. So I guess if this makes sense in a weird way, I want the car not to be better under David Shoup <clears throat> because I don't want to change my opinion on Doc Boo, but, uh, at the same time, he David comes with such a reputation that I'm incredibly excited to see the car run faster. Because <laughs> on the Doc Vu tune, my car is very near the goal I want it to be. So if the tune with Doc, David's going to be way better or no mark markedly better, then that's it makes me you know googly inside because it's good. I'm going to reach my goal significantly easier, maybe even exceed it by a good bit. So. Um, 
I need tires being F10s, you know, peg leg and all that. And coming from American cars, I can't, I can't believe that a car with that's going to be mostly modified by most people doesn't have uh, LSD in it. The electronic LSD shit's the biggest fucking hype. It's, it's not a thing. It's, it's just the car just breaks for you. So you don't kill yourself. They're incredibly slower that way. Um, so I have Nitto 555 G2 305s and uh, by 30 by 20. And they're pretty good, but the amount of torque uh, that comes on at 35, 4,000 RPMs fucking blows them off every time. So from a rolling start, I can go. From a dead stop, once it gets second gear, somewhere in the 4,000 range, it just destroys them. So I'm gonna probably replace them with 555 R2s because um, my goal is to have a, a car that runs 1199s or faster that I daily drive on a street tire or this R2, which is essentially a drag radio with street tire-ish treads so you can drive around. Kind of like a Mickey Thompson ET Streets. They're also car tires so you can drive around. They're just incredibly high tread wear and not, uh, you know, living in Florida in the rain, it's kind of sketchy, but <clears throat> been there, done that with these tires. So, um, so if you are interested, it's a comparison that I haven't seen done. I'm not saying it hasn't been done, but um, it's gonna compare Doc Foo's tune to David Shoup's tune live at the track at some point here soon and this is a video hoping to generate interest in it and my next project that i mentioned at the very beginning that i have two beamer projects coming up i bought a 325 ci manual 01 that i plan to it's sad because the car actually looks beautiful clean and in and out i bought it for a thousand bucks so i plan to make a video that talks about how cheap i can get it to 11s with spending the least amount of money cheapest parts possible even use whatever it takes so look out for that video if that's something you're interested in um i feel like that's more usable useful for younger people who might want to buy these pick these cars up for two three thousand bucks and get some power out of them i'm going to as the kids say clap it out <laughs> and see um if i can have a little cheap fun toy to complement the five series so a quick recap on the five series i have currently i have mst intake uh Evolution Raceworks uh, Catalyst Downpipe. I have G Plus 7.5 inch in the cooler from Amazon. I actually worked out pretty good. I have the uh, FTP boost pipe, charge pipe, and inlet pipe. I did my rod bearings, which actually were fine when I did them, but I did them anyway. So I pulled my oil pan out and I was like, fuck it, let me just do it. And they actually didn't need to be done. But now I feel good about them. I have a stage three trans tune. Um, I have the entire Power Flex uh, bushing line for the F10 535i. Ibox 20 bars B8 ghosting shocks. Um, uh, exhaust is stock except the silencers. Uh, I could not stand the sound this car was making with no mufflers. So I put the stock exhaust back but kept the silencers out. Um, and I'm gonna see if I buy some aftermarket mufflers that are lighter and better flowing than the stock one but still keep the car relatively quiet. I like the naturally aspirated straight six. Uh, engines from Beamer, but these cars, I'm not 100% happy with what I hear out there as far as uh, open exhaust on these cars. So, um, hopefully, you uh, enjoyed this or at least or look forward to the comparison. And, you know, let me know if there's any questions concerning my car, experiences with Doc Fu or David or anything like that. We want to contribute to this. I live in there between Orlando and Tampa, uh, right in the middle in a little t a town out of, in the middle of nowhere. So if we, uh, if anyone wants to tag along to these runs and when they finally happen or be part of them in case you have your own uh, set of tunes, uh, let me know and we'll get it done.